Welcome to this lecture on acute myeloid leukemia and chronic myeloid leukemia. These two hematologic malignancies arise from the myeloid lineage, but differ significantly in their biology, presentation, molecular pathogenesis, and clinical management. Understanding their mechanisms and current therapies is essential for medical students, residents, and practicing clinicians in hematology and oncology. Acute myeloid leukemia, or AML, is a clonal malignancy originating from hematopoietic stem cells. It is characterized by the accumulation of immature myeloid precursors, called blasts, in the bone marrow and peripheral blood. AML is the most common acute leukemia in adults and requires urgent intervention due to its rapid progression. Clinically, patients with AML often present with signs of bone marrow failure. These include fatigue and pallor from anemia, bleeding due to thrombocytopenia, and recurrent infections from neutropenia. Systemic symptoms such as fever, night sweats, and weight loss are also common. Certain subtypes, particularly AML M5, can present with gingival hypertrophy, leukemic cutis, or central nervous system involvement. Diagnostic evaluation starts with a complete blood count, which typically reveals anemia thrombocytopenia and either leukocytosis or leukopenia. A peripheral blood smear and bone marrow aspirate confirm the diagnosis when myeloblasts exceed 20% of nucleated cells. Flow cytometry is used to define the immunophenotype and lineage of the blasts. Cytogenetic analysis helps classify AML into risk groups. Molecular testing for FLT3 NPM1 and IDH1 or IDH2 mutations guides both prognosis and treatment decisions. In suspected acute promyelocytic leukemia or APL, a coagulation profile is mandatory due to the high risk of disseminated intravascular coagulation. The pathogenesis of AML is rooted in mutations that block normal myeloid differentiation and enhance proliferation. FLT3 internal tandem duplications are associated with a high relapse rate and poor prognosis. In contrast, NPM1 mutations in the absence of FLT3 ITD are linked to a favorable outcome. IDH1 and IDH2 mutations disrupt epigenetic regulation by producing the oncometabolite 2-hydroxyglutarate, leading to impaired differentiation. The aggressiveness of AML may vary based on the cell of origin, even among patients with the same mutation profile. AML is classified using both the HO and the French-American British or FAB systems. The FAB classification divides AML into subtypes M0 through M7, based on morphological and cytochemical characteristics. AML M3, or acute promyelocytic leukemia, is defined by the T1517 translocation and is a medical emergency. This subtype responds dramatically to targeted therapy with all transretinoic acid and arsenic trioxide. AML accounts for approximately 1% of all cancers, with about 20,000 new cases diagnosed annually in the United States. The disease primarily affects older adults, with a median age at diagnosis of 68 years. Both incidence and mortality rise with age. Standard induction therapy for AML consists of the 7 plus 3 regimen 7 days of citarabine and 3 days of anthracycline. Targeted agents, including FLT3 inhibitors such as mitostorin, IDH inhibitors, and BCL2 inhibitors like venetoclax, have expanded the therapeutic landscape. In older or unfit patients, hypomethylating agents such as azacitidine, often in combination with venetoclax, offer effective alternatives. Allogeneic stem cell transplantation remains central to the management of high-risk or relapsed disease. Now let's turn to chronic myeloid leukemia. CML is a chronic myeloproliferative disorder characterized by excessive proliferation of mature and maturing myeloid cells. It accounts for approximately 15 to 20 percent of adult leukemias and progresses through three phases, chronic, accelerated, and blast crisis. Most patients are diagnosed during the chronic phase, which is typically indolent. Symptoms include fatigue, weight loss, and early satiety from splenomegaly. 
Night sweats and low-grade fevers may also be present. Many patients are diagnosed incidentally on routine blood tests. If untreated, CML can progress to a blast crisis which resembles acute leukemia and is associated with poor survival. Laboratory findings include marked leukocytosis with a left shift and basophilia. Bone marrow biopsy shows hypercellularity with granulocytic predominance. The diagnostic hallmark is the T922 translocation, known as the Philadelphia chromosome which produces the BCR-ABL1 fusion gene. This gene encodes a constitutively active tyrosine kinase that drives abnormal cell proliferation and inhibits apoptosis. The discovery of BCR-ABL1 transformed CML into the prototype for targeted therapy. Quantitative PCR and fluorescence in situ hybridization are used both for diagnosis and ongoing disease monitoring. CML has an incidence of 1 to 2 cases per 100,000 people per year affecting mostly adults between the ages of 40 and 60. There are no strongly established environmental risk factors, though prior radiation exposure has been weakly associated. The treatment of chronic myeloid leukemia was revolutionized with the introduction of tyrosine kinase inhibitors. Imatinib, the first-generation TKI, selectively inhibits the BCR-ABL1 kinase, achieving long-term remission in most chronic phase patients. For patients with resistance or intolerance, second- and third-generation TKIs, such as dasatinib, nilatinib, and ponatinib, are available. Allogeneic stem cell transplantation remains an option in advanced or TKI refractory disease. Molecular monitoring using PCR guides therapy adjustment and can support treatment discontinuation in patients with deep and sustained molecular remission. Chronic myeloid leukemia serves as a model for precision oncology. Understanding the molecular basis of the disease has allowed for rational drug development and dramatically improved survival. Today, most patients with chronic phase CML enjoy near-normal life expectancy with appropriate TKI therapy. To summarize, acute myeloid leukemia and chronic myeloid leukemia are both myeloid leukemias with distinct clinical and molecular features. AML presents acutely, involves immature myeloblasts, and requires aggressive chemotherapy. CML is a chronic disorder characterized by mature myeloid cells and is driven by a single, well-defined genetic lesion, BCR, ABL1, that is targetable with oral TKIs. While AML has a variable prognosis depending on cytogenetics and mutation status, CML, when diagnosed in the chronic phase, carries an excellent prognosis with modern therapy. Let's now assess your understanding with six review questions and their answers. Question 1. What cytogenetic abnormality defines acute promyelocytic leukemia Answer T1517 translocation. Question 2. Which mutation in AML is associated with a favorable prognosis in the absence of FLT3 ITD? Answer NPM1 mutation. Question 3. Which test is routinely used to monitor minimal residual disease in CML? Answer, quantitative PCR for BCR-ABL1. Question 4. What is the hallmark cell type in classical Hodgkin lymphoma? Answer, Reed Sternberg cell. Question 5. Which of the following drugs is a FLT3 inhibitor used in AML? Answer, metastarin. Question 6. What is the primary molecular target of imatinib in CML? Answer, bcr able one fusion protein. Thank you for engaging in this lecture. If you found the content valuable, consider subscribing to our educational platform, sharing this with colleagues, and exploring our other videos on hematologic malignancies, targeted therapies, and diagnostic approaches in oncology. Stay committed to lifelong learning. Until next time.